So when we talk about giving, we are going to compare giving with insurances very quickly. There are different types of insurances. Do you understand insurances? There are different insurances a person can get. You can get a life insurance, you can get a car insurance, you can get a household goods insurance. But all these insurances, they don't have the same benefits. True or false? So you won't say that I've got one insurance and you settle and say, me now it's okay. Because the insurance of your house is not the insurance of the car. The insurance of the car is not life insurance. But you get all these different insurances. Why? Because they've got different kinds of benefits. But there are many people who have never prospered and broken through financially because they have never understood the different types of giving. And each and every giving has got its own benefits and this is what I want to deal with today. So that you may understand biblically the types of giving. Are you ready for that? So I'm going to give you a different kind of giving that you need to understand in our, financial, in our foundational phase. Number one, seed sowing. Somebody says seed sowing. Corinthians chapter number nine and we are reading verse number six, please. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now, a lot of people, they know about offering, they know about tithes, but very few people understand what we call seed sowing. So the first giving I want you to understand is what I'm calling seed sowing. Seed sowing is when you give money or any other seed for a specific harvest today i need you to understand that giving is all different with different benefits so seed sowing you don't just sow a seed unless you are expecting a certain harvest or you want to provoke a certain harvest so seed sowing ladies and gentlemen as the bible says here to say he that soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly but he who soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully now so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now, it's important for you to understand that you must have a specific harvest in the mind as you sow the seed. And after giving, you can believe God for the harvest and start to confess it into manifestation. There are people who tell you, when you sow, you must not expect anything. Sowing without expecting the harvest is not biblical. Because sowing and reaping, according to the Bible, it goes hand in hand. That's why the Bible says, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. So it's very important for you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that a religious mind will not feel comfortable to do this because religion tells us that we should not give to God expecting a return. But when you read the Bible, we give to God expecting a return. So it's important for you to understand that that is very important. Number two, free will offering. Free will offering, Exodus chapter 25, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they do what? They bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. I like the way God puts it. Everyone who gives willingly, you shall take my offering. Which means even you that collect offering, you must never collect offering from a person who is not willing to give. It's wrong to force anyone to give. Because free will offering must only be collected from a heart that is willing. When you hear a person is complaining about giving, you must stop them to give for a while until their heart is in the right place. Because they are not willing to give. When they complain, if you know them, or me, I know you, 
The first thing to do is to send them an SMS and say, it's okay because you're not willing. Come to church but don't give no offering until your heart is in the right place. Because that offering you are giving without being willing is not blessed, it is cursed. And God does not take an offering that does not come from a willing heart. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when God was speaking to Moses, he said, ask Israel to give me an offering. And he said, those that bring the offering willingly in his heart, you shall take an offering. So somebody who is not willing does not qualify to give an offering. You must leave them seated. So you don't go and push people to give to God, no. Because God does not take an offering given out of compulsion. God wants your offering to come out of your free will. And listen, a free will offering is an offering that is given to God without having a specific return from God. Because a free will offering is appreciating God for what he has done for you. You just feel blessed you feel taken care of and you take an offering and you give to God. And that free will offering, you don't have any specific return in your mind. You leave it in the hands of God so that God himself may be able to give you back. Now, what drives a free will offering? It is the love for God. So love is what drives your free will offering. It is just I love God, I give to God. I love God, I give my offering to God. The reason why I give is because I love him. Some of you that you are here, there are many people you have given to and you don't expect a return from them. You give to your mother, you don't expect any return from your mother. You give to people, your child will go to school. You give to them, you don't expect any return from them. You know why you do that? You are driven by love. Somebody say love. So a person that struggles to give an offering to God, that person has no love for God. Then number three, there is what we call direct giving. Somebody said direct giving. Direct giving is First Kings chapter 17. Verse number eight. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zerapath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Direct giving is when God asks us, to give a specific offering to him. Usually this happens when God want to do something in someone's life. Are you here? How many of you have experienced a time where God himself, he want to change something in your life and he give you an instruction. The instructions he give you is for you to release a certain offering. Because the Bible says, go to Zerapath, there I have commanded a widow, all right? I've commanded a widow to take care of you or to provide for you. The thing that touches me about the scripture is, why didn't God command a millionaire? But God commands a widow. Someone who is still mourning. Someone who lost a husband. But this widow has a need. So God want to provoke something through what we call direct giving. Number four, as I, uh, I'm about to close, first fruit. Somebody say first fruit. First fruit is when you give your whole in the beginning of the year or the beginning of a new job or the beginning of new, the new position. When we enter the new year, we all do what we call first fruit offering. And some of you, 2021, you haven't done it up to now. And if you haven't done your first fruit, you better do it for you to attract your harvest. Hello, somebody. Proverbs chapter number 3, verse 9 and 10, put it there. Because first fruit is when you give your whole or your increment of the salary to the Lord. The benefits or return on this type of giving is to have continuous increase in your business, not to reach a place of stagnation. Let me help you. Let me help you. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. You are here. You are earning how much? 10,000. You get promoted and they start to give you 14,000. 
What is your first fruit on 14,000? So your first increase 4,000, it becomes the first fruit because it's a new position you have never been. Are you following me? So you are going to take your tenth of your 10,000 and give to God. The whole 4,000, you give it to God as my first fruit. Why are you giving it? For you to avoid stagnation. To say, as I've recognized you, on my first elevation, may you continue to elevate me. Number five, and I close, alms. Somebody say alms. Alms giving is giving to the poor. Okay, Proverbs 19, 17. The Bible says, He that does pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he has given will he pay him back. When you give to the poor, you lend to God. And what you have given to God, God will give you back. So, alms is when you stop laughing at the poor and the needy, you start to give to them. That's why it is a sin for a child of God to pray for anyone for food when there is food in your fridge. It's a prayer I have never prayed for anyone. Father, in the name of Jesus, provide for this person. I've never done that. I've never even prayed for anyone's rent unless it's beyond my power. If the rent you are asking for is within the balance in my account, I don't pray for because the miracle is already there. I say, it's fine, give me your account and I transfer the money. Many people have done that to them. With, with many in this house, many have done that. No, I'm having this challenge, it's fine, let me send it to you. I can never pray for a provision when it is in my power for me to supply. Why am I troubling God? Hypocrisy and religion will make you poor. Because God will say you are an hypocrite, you are a liar. You are praying for this person to be provided for. In your account there is 500 rand. And the person only needs 200. So where do you want the money to come from? How do you want God to answer? God has answered through you.